I've got another one of these generic Swiss watches from the late 50s or early 60s. There was a company in Switzerland making these watches that all had the same case and the same AS1187 movement and a number of different dials that were reused and marked with a large number of different obscure brands. Some of them were store brands for retailers. Some of them were just brands that were invented by American importers who imported these watches from Switzerland and had their name put on them. This one here is a Gruaco, which stands for Grenchen Watch Company. And Grenchen is a city in Switzerland that's known as the center of, of watchmaking. Grenchen, along with uh, Geneva, are the two big centers of watch manufacture in Switzerland. So I bought this one because it has a dial that is virtually identical to the dial on my Crawford watch, which is another one of these obscure Swiss watch brands. And so this one needs to be overhauled. It's it's running, it's actually running really fast. It has very low amplitude, and low amplitude can cause a watch to run too fast because the balance wheel isn't swinging far enough. When this first arrived, I put it on the time grapher to see what our starting points were going to be to see how much improvement needed to be done. And the readings were pretty dismal. It had plus 206 seconds a day rate, so it was running very fast. It had 119 degrees of amplitude, which is extremely low. And the beat error was 0.6 milliseconds. Now, 0.6 milliseconds isn't bad. Um, beat error below one millisecond won't affect the way a watch runs. So I'll probably not worry about that too much, but the amplitude definitely has to go up and the rate needs to go down. So cleaning this and relubricating it should fix these problems. It doesn't appear to have any broken parts or anything. When I wind it up, it does run. It just doesn't run well. So we'll see what we can do with it here. And it looks like it's actually running. I thought I'd let down all the tension in the mainspring because it's been sitting here for days since I wound it. So it shouldn't have any power left, but it looks like it does. First thing we need to do is get the movement out of the case. And to do that, we need to remove the stem. This watch has a screw that you have to loosen to get the stem out, and that screw is right there. So we don't want to take it all the way out because if we if we take it or if we loosen it too much, it's going to cause the setting lever on the other side of the movement to drop off because this screw not only not only keeps the stem and crown in place, it also holds the set lever. So typically you want to loosen this like two or two and a half revolutions. Okay, I got the stem out. I had to do that off camera because I was having trouble getting the screwdriver into the screwdriver slot. I also had to remove the movement holder before I could get the stem out. So the next thing we need to do is take the watch, lay this cushion on top of it, flip it over, and lift the case off. I put the movement in a movement holder so that I can take the hands and the dial off. To get the hands off, we need to put a piece of plastic over the hands, and then we're going to use our hand levers. The plastic protects the dial and the hands from being damaged by the hand levers, and it also keeps the hands from flying up in the air when they pop off. The hands are pushed down kind of tight on this one, so it's hard to get the levers underneath it. I want to be careful not to damage the hands here. There we go. The dial is held in place by two dial screws that are set into the sides of the movement, into the edges of it. So there's one of them and there's another one on the other side. I'm going to loosen those off camera because they're so small it's hard to get a screwdriver in there when I'm looking at the, at the screen on my camera. Once I get those loosened, then the dial will pop off then. Got the dial screws loosened, so we should be able to pull this apart. Just kind of run your fingers around it all the way around to get it on all sides loosened. And there we go. There's the dial side of the movement. Now that we have the dial off, I want to disassemble the keyless works. And the first thing we need to do is take off the dial washer and the hour wheel. The post on the hour wheel is what holds the hour hand. The cannon pinion needs to come off later, that's what holds them in a hand. But we need to take off the other gears and the keyless works first because when you pull this out, it can damage the teeth in the intermediate wheel here. Or this is the, the minute wheel, I mean. It, pulling off the cannon pinion can damage the minute wheel if we don't take the minute wheel off first. So what I'm going to do is I need to take off the set bridge, which is this piece here. It's a bridge that covers up the minute wheel and then the other parts of the keyless works under here, and it also has the spring that serves as the detent spring so that when you pull the crown out and it snaps into the setting position or you push it in and it snaps into the winding position, this spring is what 
you have the tension for that. So there's two screws that hold this in place, one here and one here. Okay, I've taken the set bridge off. Now we need to take off the minute wheel and the intermediate wheel. The next thing we need to do is remove the spring right here that goes against the back of the yoke. That's the yoke spring, and I'm going to do that off camera because there's a risk of it flying away if I don't kind of keep a hand over it while I'm prying it up. Okay, I've got the spring loosened. Now we can take out the yoke. Now the yoke goes over this post right here, and then it slides underneath the part of the base plate here. There's a little groove that, that it slides into. So we need to lift the post side first, and then pull it out like that. Now that we have all those things off, we can pull the cannon pinion. And I'm going to do that using a pen vise. And what I'm going to do is the, we're going to slide the pen vise jaws over the cannon pinion. Tighten it down. And then just gently pull outward while giving it a slight, slight twist. Oh, I just pulled the movement out of the holder. Um, There we go. You want to be careful not to break the post for the second hand that sticks up to the center of the cannon pinion, and it looks like we're good. Now that the cannon pinion's off, we also need to remove the setting lever, which had come off. Normally it still, would still be attached to the screw there, but I had loosened it too far, so it fell off. If it doesn't come off right away, you need to turn the movement over and loosen the uh, screw that holds the stem in place, and that will make it fall off then. Then we need to take out the winding pinion and the clutch, and that's the rest of the keyless works. So now I can flip the movement over and take apart the, the drivetrain. Now we need to remove the train bridge next, and it's held in place by three screws. One here, one here, and one over here. And before I take that off, though, I'm gonna remove this little screw here and take off this cap jewel, which is the upper cap jewel for the escape wheel. It's easier to get that off while the bridge is still on the movement, and then I'll remove the train bridge. I removed that cap jewel and the train bridge screw, so let's go ahead and lift this off. Be careful not to damage the posts on the wheels underneath here. There we go. Now we need to remove the fourth wheel, which is this one here. This is what drives the this is what drives the second hand. And it, it's Got a very long spindle that goes down through the middle of the center wheel spindle. This is the third wheel. And then we need to remove the ratchet wheel and the crown wheel so that we can get off the center wheel, which is underneath the ratchet wheel but above the mainspring barrel. I've loosened the screws for the ratchet wheel, the crown wheel. And the click. The crown wheel screw is a left handed screw. That's something you need to be aware of. Almost all watches use a left handed screw on their crown wheel. That means that it turns the opposite direction that a normal screw does. So to loosen it, you turn it clockwise, and to tighten it, you turn it counterclockwise, which is, as I said, the opposite of a normal screw. If you don't remember that and you try to loosen it by turning it counterclockwise like you normally would do to loosen a screw, you're actually going to tighten it and you'll strip out the threads in it. The crown wheel, I believe, has a washer here, too, that we need to take out. I may have to pry that up with a screwdriver. It looks like it's stuck down on there. We can get the click here, too. The click spring goes in this little recess right here, too, and we need to get it out. And I'll take it out after I get the center wheel out. To get the center wheel out now, we need to remove the center wheel bridge, which goes across here. There's a screw here that holds it in place, and there are, and there's another screw here. So there's two screws that hold that in place. I've removed the center wheel bridge screws, and I've also managed to dislodge the washer for the crown wheel, and I've loosened out the spring for the click. I did that off camera because I had to hold one finger over on one end of it while trying to pry up the other end 
to keep it from flying out and popping across the room. So let's go ahead and get the center wheel bridge off. I'm going to have to pop it up with a screwdriver, I think. There we go. Now we can lift the center wheel out. It's not wanting to lift out of there. I'm going to have to push it out from the bottom. Take the movement out of the holder. There we go. That's loosened it. Okay, now we can lift out the escape wheel. Well, let me put this back in the movement holder first, and then we'll do that. Now I can lift the escape wheel. And now I've loosened the, the three screws that hold the barrel bridge. There's one here, one here, and one here. So let's go ahead and remove those and we can take the barrel bridge off. Use a screwdriver to pop it up there. Now when we take that off, we can get we can access the barrel and we can also remove this. This is the screw that holds the stem in place. Lift that right out of there. And let's lift the barrel out. Now we need to open the barrel and get the mainspring out. I suspect that the mainspring in this is probably no good, and I've got a new one I'm gonna install on it. So to get the main to get the mainspring barrel open, there's a lid on the bottom of it. So what we're gonna do is we're gonna put the lid side up on the table and just kind of gently press down on the sides with my finger and that'll pop it up because the barrel arbor will push the lid off. There we go. You heard the snap there as it came off. There we go. And now we can see the mainspring coiled up inside there. And what we want to do is we want to extract that and get the arbor out of it before the spring pops out because the arbor could go flying across the room when the spring pops out and I don't want that to happen. There, I've got the arbor loosened now so I can I think I can lift it out independently of the spring if I get the tweezers in here right. There we go. Now we can pull the spring out. Where did the barrel go? It just flew away. Well, here's our main spring and you can see it's not in good condition. It's coiled up and it's been set into a tight coil. And a healthy mainspring shouldn't look like that. A good healthy mainspring should have a little bit of a coil around the section where it attaches to the arbor in the center. And then it should have a very long, um, nearly straight section with another slight curve at the, at the very end, at the tail end. So when one's set into a tight spiral like this, it's not going to deliver very much power to the movement and you're, you're going to have very low amplitude. So replacing this mainspring is going to be something that's going to give a big improvement on this watch. The next thing I need to do is remove the balance jewels. The upper jewel on the balance cock and the lower jewel, which is on the other side of the base plate, are held on by ankle block springs. And so we need to we need to open those springs so that we can remove the jewels. And the way that those are done is one end of the spring is on a hinge, and the other end of the spring has ends that tight that tuck underneath the housing. I have the ankle block spring opened, and so what we need to do is hinge it upwards. And you can see the ends here where it's come out. And there we go, now it's popped up. This is called a jewel picker, and it's a very cool tool for that purpose. It's got like a sticky plastic end that you can use to pull these out with. You just touch the jewel, and it picks it up. It picked up both jewels at the same time. This, um, the anchor block jewels for the top and bottom of the balance wheel are two-part jewels. There's a lower jewel that the spindle goes through and then there's a cap jewel that goes on the end of that that the end of the spindle goes up against and the lower jewel is inside of a little metal ring called the chaton and then the cap jewel sits on top of the chaton and usually they're kind of stuck together because of the oil that's in there for the lubrication so usually when you pull out the if you touch the cap jewel you'll pull out the cap jewel and the chaton with the lower jewel at the same time and we'll have to separate those later when we clean them but that jewel picker makes it so much easier to pick them up than using tweezers because the part is small and it's really irregularly shaped. It's hard to hold it in the tweezers without it pinging off. So I like the jewel picker and it only costs, I think, like $8 on Amazon. Now that we've got the uh, jewel out, we need to close the spring and relatch it. 
because the spring is very delicate. Those things break easily. So relatching it in place, it makes it a lot less likely to get broken when we clean the parts later. All right, I reclosed the spring. The next thing I'm going to do is remove the, the screw that holds the balance cock in place and then remove the balance wheel and balance cock. And I want to do that because we need to get the pallet fork and pallet bridge out and they're underneath the balance wheel. Now we can lift the balance cock off. Sometimes it's stuck down and you might have to pry it, up, pry it up with a screwdriver. There's a little slot here on the edge of the movement provided for that purpose, but this one's actually loose, so we can, I think, pick it up without having to do that. Try to kind of shake it loose so it don't stretch the spring out too much. Try to pick it up. There we go. You don't want to pull too hard on, this, on it and stretch out the hairspring because then you'll really mess it up. Now we can see the pallet fork and the pallet bridge. I wanted to show you the balance cock and balance wheel in my parts tray. I lay them upside down with the, the upper part of the balance staff into the hole where the jewel would be. And that keeps the hairspray from getting distorted if it's not laying if it's not laying directly on there where it should be. And it keeps from having too much weight on the hairspring from the balance cock. This is a safer way to store the balance while we're waiting to clean it. Now next we need to remove the pallet fork and pallet bridge, and there's a single screw that holds the pallet bridge on. So we'll take that screw out, and then we should be able to lift those out. I loosen the screw, so let's go and lift it out. Usually you have to use a screwdriver to pop this up. There's a little groove here on the back that's provided for that purpose. You can see there, the um, little, little groove there, stick the screwdriver in. Kind of pop it up like that. You want to do it gently so you don't bend the spindle on the top of the pallet fork. Lift that off, and then the pallet fork will just lift right out. Okay, that's everything on this side of the movement. There's three more things that need to be removed from the base plate before we're done. If we turn the base plate over, we can see those. There is the, there's another ankle block set, which is the lower jewels for the balance, and then there's for the escape wheel and the pallet fork, they have lower cap jewels that have to be taken off, and each of those, these are both each held on by a single screw. I spoke wrong when I said what these jewels are for, too. One of them is for the escape wheel, and one of them is for the third wheel. Uh, the pallet fork doesn't have a lower cap jewel. I'm not sure why they used a cap jewel system on the third wheel for this one. That's something I've never seen any other watch movement use, but this um, AS1187 does. And I've worked on several of these movements so far, and it's always perplexed me why they did that. The only thing left now to remove is this lower ankle block jewel for the balance wheel. And I'm going to see if I can show on camera how to loosen these. If you look at the spring, there's a little curve section on each side of the spring, and that's where you stick a tool in there. You very gently push on it push inward on it until it, see how the end there is wanting to release? There we go. And then we do the same thing on the other side. There we go, both sides are released now. And then we just pop it upward with the tweezers. There we go. And now we can remove the jewel. And once again, I'm gonna use the jewel picker to do that. There we go. So that's it, the entire movement's disassembled. It's ready to be cleaned now. I'm not going to show the cleaning process in a vi in this uh, series of videos because I've already cleaned one of these MAS1187 movements in the past. So I have a video of that cleaning process that you can watch and I'll put a link to it in the description and it'll be in the playlist for this watch also. Because the process is going to be the same for that as it will be for this one. Now I need to close this spring again just like we did for the one on the balance cock. And we close it by gently pushing in each end. Until it goes into place. There we go. There we go. Now we're done. I'll go ahead and clean the parts, and then the next video will show the reassembly and lubrication and adjustment process.